see you guys in the dark. This happened approximately 10 years ago, when I was around 18. Still a fairly young and inexperienced young woman. I was shopping at a local Aldi's. It was near their closing time, so the place was pretty empty. I paid for my things, went out the automatic doors, and started walking towards my little Honda Accord. I didn't get far from the door, maybe a fourth of the way to my car, when I saw something that made my gut clench. There was a truck parked right next to me. Now, normally cars parking next to each other in a parking lot is totally normal. But like I said, it was near closing, which means the large parking lot was almost completely empty. There were a few other cars scattered around. I always parked about four rows back because the parking lot layout made it more difficult to maneuver out of the parking lot. Normally when a parking lot is empty, drivers tend to space their cars. It's really unusual to park in the space right next to another car. The truck had also pulled up their driver's side door, facing my driver's side door. My car was facing me, and theirs was facing away. I couldn't see who, if anyone, was in there. I couldn't see much through that back window of the pickup truck. But I had a bad feeling. My brain was sending up red flags. Cell phones had only just started gaining in popularity, and I didn't have one yet. I think that was the moment that I decided I'd get a track phone. I just had a bad feeling whoever was in that vehicle was up to no good. They weren't there when I pulled in, even when the cars were kind of sparse, because it was so late, there was no reason for them to park in the same space next to my driver's side door, when they had a huge empty parking lot to choose from, which were much closer and more ideal spots. I kept my eye on that truck, and started walking back towards the entrance to the store. The store door didn't open, they were closed, and it was locked. Cart in front of me, back to the door, staring at that truck. I put my hand behind me and discreetly rapped on the door. I knew the employees were inside, but none of them were in sight. Even if they did notice me, they probably would just ignore me. Being closed by this point, and wanting to get their work done rather than deal with some obnoxious customer. So I stood there and watched that truck. If I tried to get in my car, the person inside was so close that they just had to open their door and they could easily reach out and pull me in with them. Within five seconds, they'd be able to pull me in and incapacitate me. At the moment, my only advantage was distance. If they were going to try and get me, they would have a more difficult time from my current location. The store might have cameras, I wasn't sure, but most stores do have cameras, so that might be a deterrent. I also wasn't oblivious or easy to reach out and grab where I positioned myself. I was preparing myself for a fight if it came down to it. I can't outrun a truck, obviously. At this point, my best shot was a fight in a public area. I sure hoped that they didn't have a weapon, but I mentally prepared myself to fight, as scars in a parking lot were a lot better chance than certain death if they got me in the vehicle. I continued to stare, running through the possibilities of what the people in the vehicle were up to, hoping that maybe there was someone else in the store that could come out and trigger the automatic door hoping either it would open and I could get in and get someone to call the police, or that the truck would decide that I wasn't an easy target and just go. Or if they were going to attack me anyway, just do it and get it over with. I waited in front of those doors for what felt like forever. It was probably at least ten minutes. Finally, the truck started up and then drove off. Whoever it was had been in that truck the entire time. They hadn't been inside or in another nearby business. I'm pretty sure everything else around there was closed before. Whoever they were had been in that truck the entire time. I watched the truck, watched it pull away, and watched it get on the main road. When it was out of sight, I went to my car, cautiously packed up my groceries, constantly looking around to make sure that it didn't come back and try something. Completely paranoid now, I checked in my own car, which was of course empty. I didn't drive straight home. I went the opposite way with lots of twists and turns, on a convoluted route through neighborhoods I knew well. If someone were trying to follow me, they would have had a hell of a time. While they were probably gone, my grandmother had a car follow her home from another nearby grocery store months earlier. She didn't even notice until the man was in the garage with a gun to her head. She'd just gone to the bank earlier that day and withdrew all the money for some expenses that she planned to pay that afternoon. 
That bastard stole hundreds from her. Then he ran off. She saw a car drive up, and she screamed to the driver to hit the thief. Hit him. But the man got in the car. It was his getaway car. She was hoarse from screaming for help when I saw her later that evening. For the next year, and then some, she was extremely paranoid when she went out, and quite a bit more afraid of people, where before she was just this warm, loving, carefree person. When I went anywhere with her, she'd yell at me if I unlocked the door before the garage door had shut all the way, and she'd make sure that no one got in before it was completely shut. Those bastards, they definitely changed her. They put fear into her. She was nothing but kind and loving, one of the few good people in this world, and they robbed her for their freaking drug money. Those stupid fucks were just morons. They even dropped some of their stash in her yard. The police found a bag of drugs that must have fallen out of his pocket while he was running away. They said that they were pretty sure they knew who it was, but they just couldn't do anything because there wasn't enough evidence, or it was just circumstantial, or something like that. I don't really understand the law stuff like that, but it definitely sounded like a load of bull to me and the rest of the family was pissed off the police wouldn't do anything. If they thought they knew who it was from her description, and what he'd done before, why couldn't she pick him out of the lineup? For whatever reason, they just said that they'd investigate it, but didn't do anything. Usually, we live in a very good neighborhood, so I don't really understand how this could happen, and then how the police could just not care, or even try to do anything other than take the report and drug bag that was found. So having this happen to my grandmother, I figured there was a fair chance these fuckers didn't really leave and were following me home, maybe going to try to get a second shot there where I'd be potentially isolated and by myself. Probably not, but if they were, I only had one chance to get this right. After weaving around through neighborhoods, I knew, and people I knew in, I went to a long flat stretch of road with no intersections for a few miles and that no one could see me from another road unless they were on that same road with me. I got on it and watched for that truck. The road was mostly empty, with a few unrelated vehicles. I passed by my neighborhood and turned off in another one. They probably weren't following me at that point, but seriously, I felt threatened and being ridiculously overcautious wasn't going to cost me anything compared to the slim chance that they were still following me. I squirreled around and then finally doubled back, and drove up to my house. No one was nearby, and I bolted to the front door, and got in as quickly as possible. Locked it quickly behind me. Imagining that somehow these people could magically appear out of nowhere, somehow finding me after all of this. I told my grandpa a quick version of the story, and he took out his shotgun, and we both went outside together as I got my groceries. That was the end of that. Everyone that I told said it sounded pretty suspicious, and it's better that I acted cautiously and listened to my feelings rather than who knows what could have happened. One of my friends thought it could have just been someone with a failed drug deal. I had a Honda Accord at the time, a rather popular car that many people in the area had. I suppose that it was possible that whoever was in that truck had a dealer with the same car, saw my car, and then waited next to it thinking that it was their dealer. Cars pulling drug deals would always be close next to each other, so that they could just pass the drugs and money through the window without ever getting out, often facing opposite directions like the truck was to me. But usually they have a specific time that they meet up at. If the car was empty, they'd think that they'd realize their error and just go. Maybe that was the reason. Maybe not. Who really knows? I'm happier not knowing than finding out the hard way. It shook me up enough I still think about it years later. So I'm a bartender at a gentleman's club. Our uniform, if you can call it that, is a very short, skimpy black dress and black bra. Due to my uniform being the way that it is, I do my best not to go out and direct public after work due to dirty looks or perverted comments that I just don't have time for. Back before the current state of the world, I had just gotten off of work. It was around 2.30 a.m., and I decided to run to my local Walmart to grab some dog food and other household items that I needed, thinking there really wouldn't be anyone there besides staff members. I ran in with a jacket to try and be a little modest, went directly to the pet aisle. There was a guy stocking the shelves. I gave a wave and smiled, proceeded looking for my dog's brand of food. I grabbed a 20-pound bag, and the stocker asked if I needed any help. 
I'm not really a small girl, but I have a slight frame. Like I'm tall, but I have a small waist. I told him that I was fine, but thanked him, and headed to the grocery section. I was in the freezer section when my stalker slash stalker showed up again, this time with another dude. They were just standing there, watching me decide which pizza to pick. And when I turned to leave, stalker asked again if I needed help. I told him no, but thanked him again and smiled. I then made my way to the checkout aisles. On my way out, I saw a man heading out about ten feet behind me. I quickly walked to my car, threw my purchases in the passenger side, and jumped in, locked my doors. I was worried that he would try and talk to me, and I just wanted to go home. I felt dumb after realizing the guy went to his own car and wasn't even near me, and started my 15-minute drive home. I was about halfway home when I noticed this black car behind me taking all the same turns as me. I live in a rural area, and while it's possible he lived nearby, there aren't many people that take these roads. I turned a road after mine, and he made the same turn. It leads to a dead-end road with a cow farm, so I knew that he was following me. I get to the end of the road and do a quick three-point turn and speed back out of the road. He's still behind me. I called my boyfriend and told him what was going on, and that I didn't want to drive home where he would know where we lived, and asked him to meet me at Walmart. I sped the whole way there, hoping a cop is sitting somewhere and will pull us over. Black car guy is still on my ass. I pull into the Walmart parking lot and park under a street lamp. Black car pulls into the spot across from mine, and I'm just freaking out. About 15 seconds later, I see my boyfriend's truck, and he pulls in. More like Driftson, right next to me, asks me if I'm okay, and I point to the car. Now my boyfriend is not a small man. He's about six foot four and pretty big, like his arms are the size of my head. He's very intimidating, but a very quiet and kind man. He gets out of his truck and starts to walk over to the guy and yells to them, You need to talk to her or something? Guy in the black car just takes off. I don't know if it was the man that was hanging out with the stalker, but I don't go there after work anymore. So, to the guy in the black car that tried to follow me home, you better not try that shit ever again. So when I was around seven, I was with my grandpa, and he had just taken me fishing the other day. I very, very much preferred him over my other grandfather, because my other grandpa was obnoxious. Neither one of them was creepy, but that's not the point. The point is, my grandpa took me fishing early in the morning, and I was spending the day at his house. Later that night, I really wanted some boiled peanuts. I love them, and always have. So he took me to an Aldi's store. For those who might not know, Aldi's is a store in the southern U.S. We walked in, and it was a pretty small store. So I wandered off while he was getting the peanuts. I was near the front of the store, and a man came in and randomly tickled my stomach for a second. Nobody but me and him noticed, and he didn't say anything to me or look at me in a weird way. So far, those of you reading this are the only people who know about this. I haven't really wanted to tell anyone. Anyways, he tickles my stomach. I watch him go out to a small little green Honda, and I got a little creeped out. My grandpa comes back, and we buy the peanuts, leave, and get in his truck to go back home. I never told him about the man. The next weekend, we go fishing on the lake again, Saturday morning. This time, we go to the sporting goods section in Walmart to buy some fishing line and some hooks because my grandpa had lost them at home after buying the bait the previous day. As we walked into Walmart, I saw a car that stuck out to me. It was that Honda. I knew it was the same Honda because it had a long scratch on the door, as if someone keyed his car. It also had a very ridiculous of rims on the tires that stuck out. I got very creeped out, but I didn't talk much, so I still didn't say anything to him. I now know how dumb of me that was. A minute or so later, we're in the store looking around at the same things before we get our fishing supplies. As we were walking up and down the different aisles throughout the store, I saw the man at least five times, looking at me each time. He had a bright yellow jacket, so it was hard to miss. I stayed close to my grandfather, since Walmart was a lot bigger than Aldi's. The man tried to approach me at one point while my grandpa wasn't looking, but I quickly made my way beside my grandfather, asked him if he could hurry up and get the fishing line. 
I got very creeped out throughout my visit to Aldi's and Walmart. This man is one of the reasons why I'm paranoid today. I hated being home alone because I was always afraid of what could happen, and that guy always comes to mind. Every time I read some stories, I think of this guy, even though it's not nearly as bad as the other stories. This happened when I was around eight or nine years old. The story starts with my sister and I playing in the park after school. We would go there pretty much every day. Sometimes when we went, there was a group of older boys there, all around 16 and 17. We paid no mind and just went about our business. Skipped a few days. I was at school. It was dinner time, so all the kids were in the playground. I looked towards the gates to notice one of the older kids from the group in the park the other day. Just stood there, watching. I decided to ignore it and go play with my sister. After school, I decided to nip down to the corner store and get some penny sweets. I noticed the boy from earlier follow me in. I thought it just might be a coincidence, so I went on my merry way until I noticed him following me. Thankfully, our streets had many small snickets to hide down. I power walked down to one of the snickets, all while looking over my shoulder to see him catching up. So I ran and ended up hiding in someone's garden. I peeked over the wall to see him quickly look around, and then he walked away when he realized that he had lost me. I went home. I didn't tell anyone what happened and just tried to ignore it. The next day came. It was the weekend, so my sister, Luis... Our other friend, Elora, and I went to the park for a little while. There was a field behind the park, and right at the top of the field was the back of some supermarkets like Aldi's, Pets at Home, Pound Stretchers, etc. We decided to take a walk up in the skips to see if we could see anything to make a den. We found a few wooden pallets and made a little house. Elora and Luis decided that they wanted to get some old sheets and pillows to put in the den, so I agreed to stay guard. They went their way, I was alone, or that's what I thought. The guy that followed me before was right behind me. I just froze where I was. I didn't know what to do. I was still behind the supermarkets at this point, so no one else was there. He asked me how old I was, and I stupidly told him. He said that he was 16. Then he asked if I had a boyfriend, and I said no. He told me that he had been watching me, and then said that he wanted to show me something. After refusing to go with him, he pulled out a knife and motioned me to climb up the small hill. I freaked out and complied. He had me cornered. He said, pull down your pants. I asked him why, and his exact words were, I want to shag you. I looked to the left of me and decided that I had enough room to escape. I ran past him and he started chasing me down the field. Just as I turned to run into the park, I saw Luis and Alora come towards me with sheets and pillows. As soon as the creeper saw them, he stopped chasing me and walked away like nothing happened. Needless to say, I'm glad that I found the courage to run, and so happy that I bumped into my sister and her friend. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.